It's the Michigan Football Report here on a Tuesday with some news that's been taken over the Michigan Twitter sphere, Facebook, blogs, all over the internet. Want to make sure you guys know exactly the situation, what we know, what we can tell you at this time. What we know for sure is that Daxon Hill, Michigan's third year starting safety, projected to potentially be a first round pick, maybe early second in the 2022 NFL draft, did not make the trip with the team on Christmas Day, December 25th. So, what we ascertain, what we kind of, you know, dots together is his brother, Justice Hill, running back for the Ravens, was publicly tested positive for COVID on December 25th. I'm not sh- saying that they, uh, he got it from his brother, but his brother's been on the injured reserve list all year with, I believe, was a knee injury. Uh, Daxon Hill, I don't believe, with his, with his family, but maybe he got it from his brother, or maybe they had a close contact and they wanted to keep him isolated. But as we are filming this here, almost 4.30 uh, Eastern on Tuesday, the I guess uh, new CDC guidelines that say um, people who are asymptomatic that have been vaccinated and uh, test positive potentially could return after just five days. So if the Big Ten, Michigan allow Daxon Hill, if it is COVID, which we're not saying it is, but it sure seems like that is the case, either a COVID positive test on December 24th or prior, team left on 25th, he didn't make the trip, or it's a close contact and he's being uh, you know, tested after that. If it was the 24th, he could potentially fly down as early as, I guess, tomorrow, right? This would be the day five if he tested positive on the 24th and then they have to get back-to-back tests. So maybe uh, Wednesday or Thursday he could fly down for Friday's game. But was told just before filming that uh, – you know, don't count Dax out yet. He could take his own flight, be cleared to either take a private jet. Hey, Stephen Ross, they're playing Michigan's playing in your uh, your backyard, your stadium, Dolphin Stadium. Uh, let's get him there on the related corporation, Dolphins, whatever it is, private jet, Ann Arbor to Miami. Let's get him there. If he does miss the game, folks, though, I don't think it's the biggest blow. Certainly if Michigan were to lose a you know, skill position player, offensive lineman, Aiden Hutchinson, much bigger deal. Michigan has plenty of depth at safety. So the news, this is from yesterday, but it came out after uh, we, we p- published and recorded yesterday's show, is the offensive lineman, the 2021 Remington Award finalist, second team All-American. Uh, Virginia Center has officially committed to Michigan. He passed admissions and he can get into Michigan as a grad transfer player. I'm going to try and pronounce this because I got it uh, from the internet. Olu Sheshgun Olu Wu Time. All right, that's how you pronounce the, the man's name. So if you make a mistake on it, Going forward, uh, you should just renounce your Michigan uh, fanhood because I have told you how to say it, and uh, that's just what it is. So this, folks, is big news, right? This is Michigan playing the transfer portal the right way, right? Um, Alabama, we've seen them. They've gotten two of the top four transfers out there in the uh, on the streets in, in 2021 going into 22, including LSU's All-American level quarterback, cornerback Eli Ricks. Michigan's doing the same. Second team All-American by Football Writers Association. So it wasn't second team AP or anything like that, but was a finalist, one of three finalists for the Remington Award as the center, best center in college football. 32 consecutive starts from 2019 to 21, and he has one year of eligibility remaining. So I peg him to uh, you know, take over at the starting center job uh, for Andrew Vistardis coming into the 2022 season. So if you are excited for, we're going to call him Victor, okay? I said you guys got to pronounce it, but I'm already going to you know, hack the name here because I'm not looking at the pronunciation. He goes by Victor, so we're just calling him Victor O from now on this show. Go down in the comments. I want to see how many of you are excited that Michigan has finally got an All-American level transfer player in the portal. And it was like year two, year three of the transfer portal. Uh, at really kind of year two as a real thing. We don't have to get some sort of exemption or anything like that. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for next season. My projected starting lineup, Michigan should return three starters on this offensive line. Uh, Carson Barnhart uh, at left tackle, Tre- Trevor Keegan on in the inside at left guard, and then Zach Zinter at, uh, at right guard. Trent a. Jones has played a bunch this year, has been kind of a quasi six lineman in those big jumbo sets. And then uh, Victor O, as we're calling him, will slot in there at center. Very, uh, you know, mature team, veteran team, uh, three guys who were in their fourth year, redshirt juniors, and then Olu in his fifth, and then Zach Sintner will be kind of a two-and-a-half-year starter next year. He started half of the season in 2020 and all the games this year. So all those guys will actually, except for Victor O, will be able to return in 2023 as well. So that is Michigan's transfer portal news of the day and my projected starting offensive lineman. But I want to ask you guys this as we're kind of getting towards the end of the season. Uh, it's the 28th day, so we've got, uh, what, 14 more days till Michigan season's over on uh, on January 10th after they beat Cincinnati or Alabama national title game. Uh, doing a little uh, customer service feedback uh, week. How likely are you re- to recommend 
this show to another Michigan fan. Scale it from 1 to 10. We want to make sure that we are delivering the product that you guys want. So if it's a 9 or a 10, just put a 9 or a 10 there. But if anything less than a 9, folks, uh, wants you guys to uh, to let us know what can we improve on or you know what we're doing well but what you want to see more of from uh, this show going forward. So I want to make sure that uh, we get that feedback as we're wrapping up another year. We can just move on, Trace. Uh, we don't have to worry about that lower third. I got producer Chase in my ear say, give me a minute here, stick on this. But you guys get it. Scale of 1 to 10, let me know what you guys feel about the show. And, hell, let us know what we're doing good and what we can improve on heading into 2022. All right, now we want to take a look at some Michigan football mailbag questions. I asked you guys to use hashtag mailbag on yesterday's show. So we have a bunch of your questions and comments coming up uh, today, and then we'll put them also out on Thursday. We'll do a second mailbag because we've got so many coming in. Uh, Levi, what's his name? Levi Vandy from Twitter says, is George Pickens going to play on Friday or he'll be still in COVID protocol? Well, uh, this is no news now as of yesterday. Both George Pickens, a wide receiver for uh, Georgia, who actually had his best season two years ago as a true freshman, um, he has been cleared from what we've been heard. He is not actually ever tested positive, but did have a close contact. So they held him out of traveling with the team. He had 14, uh, 49 catches for 727 yards and eight touchdowns as a true freshman. Uh, not as much of an impact last year, 36 catches, uh, 533 yards, and then missed the entire season up until the Georgia Tech season finale and then played against Alabama uh, in the SEC title game is uh, his contribution this year. So he will play and he does not have COVID. Also, JT Daniels, their starter at the beginning of the year, who was injured, got replaced by uh, by Stetson Bennett. He also tested positive for coronavirus, but has now cleared whatever protocols Georgia and the SEC are putting in place, and now he is reporting with the team as well. So Georgia, as far as we know, as of right now, Tuesday afternoon, they are at full strength. Michigan, we'll see what happens with Dax Till. Friend of the show, friend of the program, Carl Cordell says, should we be concerned about losing momentum with a long break since the Big Ten Championship game? And it's been a while, right? I feel that uh, you can even tell with our numbers, the amount of engagement, our, our views have kind of started to taper off about the last seven, eight, nine, ten days because college football is no longer the top of you know football fans' mind. The NFL, NBA is back, et cetera, holiday season. I'm hoping that uh, things start picking up for just the buzz around this game because it does feel like this college football season has been kind of a, a downer uh, all in. But, Carl, good question. But think about a normal year for a Michigan team or any college football team that were to play on a New Year's game or right around this time, January or December 30th, 31st, 29th, is they wouldn't have played in the Big Ten title game. Michigan didn't, you know, any year prior to this. And so their last game would have been against Ohio State in late November, November 26th, 27th. So this is less of a layoff, uh, 27 days, than a normal end of your year, uh, November 27th to, let's say, January 1st. Bowl game. So I think Michigan's going to be fine, and they've been practicing uh, at a high level all last week and then the last couple days, the past three days, I guess, down in Florida. If you haven't yet, folks, head over to our partner, Fanatics, chatsports.com slash champs. The, the link is still working, and we've got most sizes in sweatshirts, T-shirts, hats, got some plaques and things now. Uh, it's not going to ship uh, before the game because the game's in just a few days here, but you can likely get it before the national championship game on January 10th. So use that link, chatsports.com slash champs, if you want to know the spot to get Michigan football Big Ten title, college football playoff, and Michigan versus Georgia Orange Bowl gear. You know, the competition, MDEN, let me just tell you, I'm not trying to bass them, but we ordered some stuff for people with MDEN uh, here at the company. And uh, let's just say they're a little behind the customer service the last few weeks, uh, not shipping things out. So get going with Fanatics, chatsports.com slash champs will be down in the comments, and the link will be in the description of this video. Next question coming up from John Blaze. Who do you think Michigan should key on to stop Georgia on offense and defense? Well, uh, put some, some thought into this, and uh, I've really been watching a lot of film of Georgia over the last week and a half, and specifically I've been kind of you know reading all their articles and things like that, and these are my three guys. Two of them should be fairly obvious, right? Uh, Jordan Davis, 360 pounds, whatever you, whatever you have, 370 pounds, some people say, and the Kobe Dean, the captains of their team, the leaders of their defense, uh, two first-team All-Americans. Davis was the Outland Trophy Award winner, uh, best interior lineman. Uh, he was also the Bednarik Award winner for the best uh, defensive player in the country, even over Aiden Hutchinson, and both players were first-team AP All-Americans. Now, Dean, their linebacker, number 17 on his jersey, he was the Buckus Award winner. So you've got two of the five top trophies in college football were part of that Georgia front seven. They certainly are formidable, certainly, uh, you know, 
tremendous guys, a tremendous players for Michigan fans to keep an eye on. Number 99 and number 17 in the defense. Put their numbers in there so you guys can key in uh, during the game. And then one guy I just love his game, and he's only a true freshman, Brock Bowers. Their tight end, 700 or so yards receiving this year. I believe it was eight touchdowns. Number 105 recruit in America last year out of Napa, California. He is maybe perhaps one of the top two or three tight ends in all of college football as a true freshman. Michigan needs to limit him to less than five catches is what I put last week on my keys to the game. So those are your players to watch for this team. So I'm giving you a little Georgia info here. I want you guys to rate your knowledge on this Georgia football team. Be honest, okay? Be honest because mine was like a D plus C minus three weeks ago. Now I would say I'm probably a B plus to an A minus. I've uh, been you know, taking it all I can so I know what to look for in this game and what to expect from Michigan and how Michigan kind of take advantage of Maybe some of the perceived weaknesses of this Georgia team, and especially in defense, folks, there are not many. So let me know where you're at. Your knowledge is A, B, C, D, or F. Michael Wingett says, can we get a Yoder-hosted Michigan basketball report? Hmm, I don't know there, Michael. I, I think uh, I, football is enough for me, and there's so much going on during the offseason, recruiting January to February, March, April, spring spring ball. I think I've got enough going on, so I think we're going to hold off on, uh, on a basketball report, but we will still do a bunch of content during the Big Ten tournament and the NCAA tournament. You know, if Michigan makes it, top five team, now they're unranked, not having a great season. So if they're in the NCAA tournament, Big Ten tournament, we'll do near-daily videos surrounding that. Next question coming up from Elijah B. I know our receivers aren't collectively on Bama's level, but with how they torch them through the air, do you think we'll see a more balanced attack or possibly leads more, lean more towards a pass attack uh, in our game plan against Georgia? Uh, look, I think Michigan will be um, not smart to try and test Georgia through the air and try and uh, change what's got them here so far this season. Now, uh, Georgia's got more talent, especially, you know, all levels of the detail than Ohio State or the defense, but their talent level overall as a program and on defense, if you look at how many four stars, five stars, upperclassmen, projected first round, second round NFL draft picks, it's pretty on point. So Michigan should keep Georgia off balance, right? Um, keep getting A.J. Hanning and other guys uh, going in the reverse and the uh, and the screen game, and then make sure we're using Diamond Edwards in the pass game, you know, both catching and receiving. But Michigan needs to make sure they're running the ball and wear Georgia down. So in a tight game in the fourth quarter, they are taking it to them and really can't be stopped like you saw against Ohio State in the fourth quarter of the win on November 27th. If you love Michigan football, folks, and if, hell, if, if you just even like us, if you gave us at least a 6 on the uh, 1 through 10 scale, then I am imploring you to subscribe to the channel. We're trying to get to 19,000 before the game kicks off on Friday. It's YouTube.com slash Michigan TV if you forget. Or if you've been a subscriber for a while and you gave us a 9 or a 10, you'd recommend us to a fan. Now's the time. We'd really appreciate it. Send that link to a fan. Screenshot it. Text it to him. Whatever you have. Say, hey, watch this guy, Yoder. He's got a show every day. And, heck, he's typically got pretty good information that uh, most other news sources are either behind or uh, you know don't really cover. Hence, Dax and Hill uh, rumors on coronavirus. All right. So yesterday, I think it was yesterday or the day before, we asked you to share your top moments of 2021. I gave you my top five. It was yesterday. I actually gave my top five and then the sixth, the, uh, the tied for fifth. And it listed off about 15, 20 more that it was really tough to pick. So let's just roll through here to end the show. Uh, and I'll ask you guys, I'll ask you at the end of the show, but if you want to go down the comments, let me know if you didn't get on this show, what your favorite moment and why of this season was. Go down and let me know in the comments. Grant Kovac said 18, Aiden's 13th sack to break the Michigan record. And the fact that he sat, sacked Coldridge, or he says Coldridge, I'm calling him cold because you know he's chilly, he's got the flu. To break the record is even better. What a play and what a record for Hutchinson. Next up, we'll go to Jay Mommy. Aiden trash-talking the Buckeye tackle. Then he flattened him like a pancake. Had that been on the broadcast and we could have taken it in during real time, at least the trash-talking, and he said, bring it on, biatch, or something like that, then I think it would have been up there in the top two or three, but we didn't really get that video until right afterwards. Next up, Becky and Chad, long-time viewers of the show, uh, always see their comments. Thank you so much to them. The win over Ohio State, look, as a moment, you can't uh, – Give me a better moment that this program's had in well over a decade. So I agree with you wholeheartedly there, Becky and Chad. Ryland, 31. Ryland, uh, 31. I'm not sure if it's Ryland T or Ryland. Nevertheless, when Brad Hawkins stripped Martinez, a very kind of forgotten about and underrated play. If you remember, a minute 50, minute 45 left. Nebraska runs a quarterback draw, and they were marching down to try and kick a game-winning field goal. Uh, 
Uh, Brad Hawkins stripped Adrian Martinez. Some people said, hey, uh, it, was, it was forward progress. He was stopping his momentum. Nevertheless, uh, that play could have ended Michigan's playoff run. Uh, uh, absolutely agree with you, but he says beating Ohio State tops them all. Chris Carroll, he's got, my favorite was when Michigan swept the last three games and every person who opened their yaps about how we need to be worried uh, about Penn State and Maryland, uh, blah, blah, blah. Sorry about that. Just kind of reading it. Keep every third response uh, in your post worried my ass. Um, I think uh, really, really good take is that the Ohio State win uh, and winning those last three games are just kind of proving a point to all the doubters of this team, even as you got you know up into the top three, four, five ranked teams in the country. I think most Michigan fans knew they were looking at something special, but the broader uh, college football fan, I don't think realized it until that Ohio State game. All right, we got Jerry Scuelli coming up here. The play where J.J. threw across the field that passed a Dalen Baldwin in the opener. It was in the fourth quarter, I believe, about six, seven minutes left, and he rolled out and stepped up with four guys in his face and just delivered maybe the most impressive throw I've ever seen a Michigan quarterback uh, make. But, I mean, it was in a 40-point blowout win over Western, but it gave you a glimpse of the future of what J.J. McCarthy has already contributed to this team. Uh, this is the last one, but stick with us uh, to the end of the show. It's CL3 and Beast. He says the kneel down against Ohio State. How can you argue with that? Uh, I think we all knew maybe a minute prior to that that the Michigan had won the game, but that's probably one that everyone will remember where they were for uh, for generations to come. So I'll keep doing this if you guys keep giving me good uh, responses. So comment below. Name your favorite Michigan football moment or moments if you have multiple in the 2021 season. And we'll put those on more shows coming up this week and ideally after Michigan Beach, Georgia on Friday. We'll see you guys back Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday morning with more Michigan football content leading up to the Orange Bowl. Till then, go blue.